Welcome to the third and final video in this build series where uh, I've been tackling this flow bench. And uh, if you haven't caught in the first couple of videos, um, this is used to performance test cylinder heads. And um, it was a very unique build. And so uh, let's get to this third and final video where we wrap this thing up. All right, so finally all the construction is finished, all the initial sanding and filling is finished, and I'm now in the process of spraying primer on all the components. Um, so I'm using some uh, shellac-based primer. Uh, this stuff is terrible to brush and roll, but works really well out of a sprayer. Just a little bit more of a pain in the butt to clean the sprayer up. Um, I've got one side of every piece coated uh, so you can see here, this is the, the side door. It's got one side coated, this side's not. So now I'm moving on, of course, to do, to do that other side. Uh, so here we go. Um, gonna get gun filled up with some paint, get my first piece on the, uh, on the turntable here, and uh, we're gonna get spraying. All right, a number of things going on here. Um, first off, all the interior pieces have been primed and painted. Um, the interior gets painted because MDF is actually porous. Um, people use them on CNC tables with their vacuum table because it'll actually pull the piece down to the, back, uh, to the table. Um, so that's why they have to get painted to block the airflow going through them. That's all been done. The exterior has just been primed. That will get, um, after assembly, that will get uh, patched, primed, and painted, um, except for the bottom. The bottom is getting painted first. Uh, because this piece is going to be so heavy, um, I'm not going to be able to lift it up or kind of roll it over to paint the bottom, so I'm painting that first, and that's just going to go down on, um, on what's going to be some, some furniture dollies 
because once again, it's going to be so heavy, I'm going to need to be able to kind of maneuver this around my shop and kind of get out of the way. Um, so I got to build some furniture dollies as well. Uh, instead of buying them, they're kind of, I don't know, might as well build them, right? I bought some five inch casters. Uh, I just got to kind of bang them together with some plywood and glue and some nails. Last thing is while I'm holding my hand here, this is uh, going to be a check valve essentially. Um, and uh, some of the instructions on the PTS form are to use what's called a scupper valve for boats. Uh, essentially, it's a, it's a valve that blocks water from going one way, but allows it out the other. Um, it's rubber. It's got some flat pieces to it. I can show you here. Should have had that in my hand as well. But here's the flap. And then here's the gasket that that flap butts up against. So. Um, it won't allow airflow to go this way, but it will allow airflow to go this way. And the reason we need this on this specific uh, flow bench is because it has 12 motors. Eight of them are going to be controlled with, a, I'll call it just a variable, uh, variable speed, variable power type control. The other four are going to be just dedicated on off. So those four motors that are going to be on off, they need some type of check valve on them. So when they're off, the airflow doesn't have a kind of a short circuit to go from the high pressure side to the low pressure side of the motor plate and just recirculate. Um, not knowing exactly which four motors are going to be at this time, um, I'm going to make 12 of these and put them on every motor. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it's just a little bit more extra work, I suppose. So I need to make a wooden ring to go on the inside of this so I have something to screw my scupper valve assembly to. Um, so I got some hole saws I just bought because it's kind of a, a size I didn't have. And uh, yeah, we're going to make 12, uh, 12 check valves here. So here we go. Oh, and some furniture dollies. After creating all 12 of the scupper valves or check valves, um, I, I marked the, uh, what I'll call the hinge location of that valve, um, which is where the flap is at, and um, I want them all pointing up so when, uh, you know, when it's in its assembled position, the gravity will help kind of close that valve down. I'm using Gorilla, uh, I think polyurethane adhesive. Um, and it really sticks to pretty much anything so it sticks to the PVC, sticks to the painted wood and I use that for the duration of the project here. After this was all glued in I came back and I used caulk to fill all the gaps around the PVC as well as between the, um, the PVC and the wooden ring.
All right, so I'm finally at the uh, at the moment where we're going to start assembling this thing for the last time. Um, I had to remake the little scupper valve rings. Um, I made them the wrong size the first time. I kind of underestimated. Did, I didn't understand exactly how everything was going to go together when I first made them. Um, and so uh, I realized that I made them for the wrong side of the valve. Anyway, I had to remake them, but they are all done. Sitting over here. These cupper valves are mounted to the motor plate behind me. Um, and so now we're moving on to assembly, like I said. I'm starting with the selector assembly that'll be made on the bench, just so I can kind of roll it and flip it over and have it a nice working height. Unfortunately, from there, everything's gonna have to transition to the floor and onto these uh, furniture dollies I made. But well, anyway, here we go. A couple things to note here on the assembly process. Um, the construction adhesive uh, works well and, and this, all the squeeze out can be kind of wiped just like sealing or caulk to make that joint airtight. But I didn't have you know consistent squeeze out on all joints so I'd come back with some actual caulking and make sure that every joint was sealed up and make sure it was airtight. After getting this lower panel on, I figured it was time to get the vacuum motors installed since everything was wide open. Uh, but the footage was terrible. It was all just the back of my head and my hands uh, just fumbling around with this. So um, what I did is I started with the bottom three motors, attached the gaskets to the motor bodies. They have uh, The gaskets have some adhesive backing. Get them into place, slide my hold down over top of the studs, get the bolts or the, excuse me, the nuts loosely started just so the motors are kind of held there but not tight. And then go on to the next row. Um, and start like on that far left side, get that one installed, put the hole down over top of the stud, get the nut started, and then I could really tighten down um, that small hold down as well as the left side of that larger lower hold down and just kind of work my way from the bottom to top, left to right, uh, until I got them all assembled.
After getting those studs ran down through the threaded inserts, I inserted a, uh, a nut on each of those studs to lock that, that stud into place or that all thread piece into place. Uh, and so they're equal top and bottom. And then I came back with a double nut and set that at the same elevation for all four of the studs you see here. I think that was five inches off the surface. And then over top, I slid the baffle plate, another set of washers, and some nylon lock nuts. And this was done uh, on the top as well as the bottom. So that all thread is one continuous piece that's about, uh, about 12 inches long that runs from the top here through this piece of MDF and the thread insert down to the bottom. I have some strips attached to the bottom of this top panel that set the four aft distance of that centered motor plate and um, those strips were actually hitting the motor hold downs on that top right corner so I had to go out with a multi-tool there and chamfer off the corner of it so it sit down flush. This is a little challenging to caulk and seal after the fact, a little tight hole to work in there. Um, probably be a good spot to use some extra adhesive. And with all my fitting and measuring and getting all this uh, kind of done before paint, everything lined up pretty well except for this front console. It, uh, it needed a fair amount of work to flush it all back up. So at this stage, we've got, of course, the whole cabinet's been assembled, as you can tell, um, except for some of the removable panels on the side here, of course, the doors on the front, and then the, um, the control panels here haven't been installed, but 99% uh, of it has been assembled. And then I went through and filled all the screw holes with wood filler, uh, and then as well some of the seams between the panels I filled with wood filler. Uh, and then the exposed MDF edges that are um, porous, they either got wood filler because they were part of a seam or they got um, drywall compound kind of jammed in there and smoothed out uh, and then sanded down. And that drywall uh, compound helps fill those pores in the end of the MDF so then the, the paint doesn't go in there and expand them and make it all fuzzy and gross looking. So uh, they help just keep that smooth. After all that was done, a lot of sanding uh, to get everything as what I thought was flat. 
and then had to come back and um, put some primer on this thing. So it's got one coat of primer on it right now. It's been plenty, uh, had plenty of time to dry. Wasn't able to work on it yesterday, so it's had over, it's had about two days to dry. Uh, so now I'm gonna sand down this primer. It's kind of rough uh, and kind of see what I have, right? If I have um, uh, everything's nice and nice and flat and all the panels are looking good, there's no other gaps. I'm probably ready to put the first coat of top coat on there. And honestly, the the top coat's gonna be my first uh, true look at how good <laughs> the panels are, are lining up and whether I miss small gaps or little waves or anything like that because with the white paint, it's hard to see and with the varying hues of, you know, primer over primer, primer over raw MDF, it's hard to tell where there might be higher low spots or dips or whatever. So. Uh, there's a good chance that I'll think it looks good after the primer, spray top coat, find it doesn't look great, have to come back and, and fix some areas and reprime and then repaint, but that's all part of the process. So um, yeah, here we go. Uh, let's start sanding. Got 320 grit in the orbital. We're going to hit this thing and smooth it out. This was such a uh, such a challenging and fun build. Uh, it's not it's not very often that that someone requests something very cool and um, and interesting as a flow bench here. So it was a lot of fun to work on. Uh, time consuming, but but very cool project. I know these three videos have had a lot of detail. They're pretty long, uh, but hopefully someone out there will find them useful. That's maybe trying to build their own flow bench from the PTS plans or is just looking for general ideas. I appreciate everyone for watching, and as always, have a good one.